Hey everybody, how you doing today? Happy Thursday. We are almost at the end of the week, believe it or not. Right? It's almost Friday, it's pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's take a look, see what's going on today. We got a couple things we want to talk about, and then I got a couple extra topics um, from a couple questions I've been getting. Uh, things we should spend a little much, a little more time talking about um, to help hopefully clear things up for the project, and then um, just another another fun topic here. So let's see. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. How about hitting this one? Now maybe we can see it. Super, thank you so much for donating those bits to the Student Scholarship Fund over at the University of Michigan Dearborn College of Engineering and Computer Science. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks for thanks for coming along. Um, and I am behind on getting some stuff graded. I'm sorry. I thought I'd be making a little more progress, but I'm still digging my way out from having a, a rough weekend. So i um, got to work on these projects and labs for you here. Uh, definitely we'll get them done uh, over this coming weekend. So sorry for that. Hopefully, actually, on Friday, we'll see. It's it's Friday's meeting day. We've got meetings all afternoon. It should be all sorts of fun, I'm sure. All right. Um, so we didn't have a lab to talk about today, which is cool. And I don't think we're going to do another lab on unit tests. Um, that would put it due the same as Project 1. So I think uh, we'll just talk about some more material, and then we'll have time to get working on the unit test lab and the project here. Oh, this is those aren't in a, those don't look right. The spacing's off on them a little bit here. Wow, I got some cat hair too. What a that's that's awesome. All right, we'll just add our little spaces in here just to make it match. How you folks doing? Any other uh, questions? I, so I posted the the couple special or extra topics, uh, things to talk more about in Discord. You know, let me uh, let's run this. Uh, let's start NetBeans while we're waiting here. I'm fixing up some of these. There we go. Maybe. There it goes. Come on, that beans. So I, I have had pretty good luck uh, with IntelliJ. There's a free community edition. Uh, JGrasp, it, it, JGrasp doesn't do anything for you. There, there's no like great shortcuts. There's no IntelliSense. There's no automatic projects. Uh, it, doesn't do the unit testing stuff for you, best I can tell. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of tools that do a lot of that, the, the boring work for you. Um, a lot of that stuff that's easy to automate, uh, like adding code for setters and getters and, and all sorts of that fun stuff. Um, definitely prefer a, a better IDE to that. I think the, the only, only good thing about JGrasp is the visual debugger, which is pretty cool. Um, it, it, they, they did a really nice job with their debugger, um, so you can actually like view things in the canvas view, which is kind of fun, but I don't think that really makes up for the lack of everything else. Should have started this first. Should have known better. Yeah, so the IntelliJ tool is uh, is pretty good uh, as well, um, and I don't think it crashes as much or or is quite as slow. Maybe um, so I think it just uh, doesn't have issues with the plugins either. Uh, all right, there we go. So we had to talk about Lab Five. That was. Our lab five on Tuesday, right? Yep. Cool. So actually, I want to kind of start with this one. Um, and we'll look at a couple up for fun. Is this lab five? That's the other lab five. Is the fifteen hundred lab five? We want 
R lab five. There we go. I'll close some of these ones down here. I guess another thing about JGRASP is it's simple. So maybe it, there's less stuff going on. So maybe that's a little bit easier to, to jump in um, as a, a beginner here. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, you don't want to say there's much magic happening. And, and, you know, don't worry about some of this magic stuff. But, again, I, I still, still definitely prefer an ID that does this for me. Is this still slow? Still some lag here. Oh, Windows, Windows 11 took away my shortcut. Usually you can like right click in the, the taskbar here and get the task manager, but now I have to use my shortcut, the control shift escape will open up task manager here. Let's see, what is uh, what's even going on here? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so if, if you like the simplicity, then that's fine. Uh, you can definitely go with it. Uh, I'm I'm just fond of not having to type. Uh, so the the IntelliSense is huge. Um, I don't know. I I'm a bigger fan of um, .NET and Microsoft stuff and C Sharp and things. So Visual Studio is is just a fantastic uh, development environment, an IDE. So that's what I'm used to. Nvidia. Anti-malware, there we go. That's uh, We want to be virus scanning right now. That's exactly what we want to do in the middle of all this. Core isolation. Mike, all right, I have to, I have to look this up now. Core isolation. So, isolation. Maybe if I spell it right. Core isolation. You want to turn it off? You don't want all that extra default security stuff? Is it going to make me reboot, Mike? <laughs> oh, it's not. Yeah, it's not even on. Bummer. I was excited. That I was thinking maybe it would, uh, would help. But thank you. Ah, a virtualization-based security. Okay, that's fun. So like everything else essentially gets virtualized so that it can't, can't access. That's fun. Uh, virtualization technology is super cool. It's like a lot of amazing stuff that happens there. Okay, I think we're a little calmer now. Sorry about that. It's maybe. maybe. Well, it's still... Anti-malware, what is it even doing? That's okay. All right, so a couple other things we wanted to talk about then. Uh, so one of them was what an abstract class is. And for some reason, I don't think we, we covered that. Um, let me actually get out the book here and see. I thought we kind of worked, worked our way through what we're looking for here. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so it was the last portion of Chapter 8 before we got to interfaces, and we didn't use that. Okay, so that's my bad. But it was like a one-liner or one-pager? It's weird. So it's, it's the first time using this book. I apologize. Uh, we used to have a different book that was like three times the price. Um, so we're uh, working through some of that stuff. My apologies. So what you can do with an abstract class is you can have some portion of your code that's actually complete in a class and other portions that are left undefined like an interface which is actually really cool you know, there's some there's some fun features you can do with abstract classes uh, so let's take a look at like our drivable interface just has methods here all we have right you, you can't have attributes you can't have anything that has actual functionality Right? So it'd be kind of nice right, if 
some of this stuff was already done for us. Right, that, that would be pretty cool. So we can look at then, let's, uh, let's for fun here, let's, should, should we do it in, not, okay, maybe we don't want to do it in Lab 5. So let me do, let me do a new project here then. Because um, if I do it in Lab 5, it might be a little harder to find. So let's make a new class here. So 2151, enter 2022. This will be abstract classes. So another um, big difference too, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, where, so an abstract class um, is something that's extend through inheritance, where with interfaces you implement them. Uh, so if you if you remember back to inheritance, you can only extend a single class, right? So you can only have one direct parent class. Now there can be like a chain of them, right? Your parent can have a parent that has a parent that has a parent, but you're only ever extending a single class, where Interfaces you can implement as many as you want. So let's see. Let's uh, let's go add a new uh, class here. And so if we want to have something that has uh, you know some bit of functionality defined, but leaves other things up to the user or, or whoever um, whoever is going to make the subclasses here, and sort of dealing with that idea that it's going to be. Um, treated with this polymorphism behavior. So maybe I want to have a collection of this other class. Um, Lego logic, no, definitely not my favorite. Um, I like it, but no, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Um, so, you know, we, we could look at um, anything that is shared behavior, right, can go in that abstract base class. Because if we know we have actual shared behavior, Right, that's not going to be different. Then it makes sense we can implement it here in this shared class. So let's see. So if we wanted to, oh, Lego Logic, you know, um, probably C Sharp. I, I do like C Sharp a lot. I like the .NET environment. I do like Python too. Python's a lot of fun. Yeah. C Sharp or Python, maybe. Not sure. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So if we're going to have some bit of shared behavior here, so we might um, define this class where we, we can have portions of it are done and other portions will leave as abstract or essentially like the interface where there is no definition for it. And when you extend it, then you need to go and add that one there. So let's do, let's just do like a bank account. This one's kind of boring, but we, we can do that. So for bank account, then, the shared behavior we're going to put. And now to make it abstract, you add the abstract keyword here. Public abstract class bank account. And what that lets you do then, so anything that you want to leave for another, or for you, the subclasses, then become abstract methods. So you, we're going to use this keyword again. So instead of an interface, we'll say a method is abstract. So we'll have... Um, you know, basic things that are common to all bank accounts we'll probably have a double for balance uh, or a private double for balance. And sorry, um, probably even better than private here um, might be protected. Remember, there's that third level of attributes there's public, there's private, and then in between is protected so that any of your subclasses also have direct access here. So we have a uh, protected double for balance. And again, this um, might not even be great because doubles are a little bit funny here so um, sometimes what you can do a little little trick here and, and how do we say long actually because you might have lots of lots of pennies here we could have a protected long for balance in cents so i'm just going to count the number of cents as a whole number as an integer value but you might have more than two billion pennies um, now I'm, I'm gonna just go out on a limb here and say none of us have more than two billion pennies but right, when we're designing our bank account software, it's possible someone's going to deposit or have in their account more than 2 billion pennies. So let, let's plan for the future here, and, and we'll do that. But you probably never have half a penny in your bank account. Right? Last, I, last I went or you know, heard, 
and you know figured out how things work at a bank is they don't deal with half cents right they're, they're just going to give you the penny or not the penny so it's one option here for your balance in cents right and then shared behavior then for bank account Right, or other things you might want to have, and I have a protected, um, oh, protected string for owner name. And what else are we interested in? Um, who owns it? Maybe a type. Um, type type gets a little bit funny, and maybe that's something you'd want to like have a specific enumerated list. So we only know of so many types here. We're not this like free text, but um, you know we can we can figure that out later. So name and balance is probably okay for now. Right? I think, uh, I think that works out okay. So then we can have... Um, what do we want to have here? So what, what's going to be... The shared behavior then is we can get balance, get owner name. So let's just right-click, insert some code, get some getters... So getting value, definitely, right? Definitely a, a good thing here. Check the box. There we go, and generate. And then maybe a constructor. So a public bank account. Account. Oh, let's let it generate it for us too. So when you start an account, um, I'm going to say you have to tell me who the owner is. Right? But we're, we'll just assume your balance is probably going to be zero. So balance and cents will set to zero. Right, so we're just we're always going to start your balance off at zero. Then we can get the balance, we can get the owner's name. So we need ways to deposit and withdraw money, right? So public. Um, now, if we wanted, um, probably a, a boolean result, right? We'll tell them a true or false if this worked or not. So we'll have a deposit, and this is a long sense to deposit. here so then we'll take the uh, we, we can look and see hey if the sense to deposit is greater than zero then we'll take our balance in cents and we'll add to it the sense to deposit and then we can return true otherwise we just return a false and say no you did a bad thing but deposits are pretty easy you just want to make sure you're giving me a positive value um, and then withdraws here are a little bit different right withdraw you have a long for sense to withdraw Draw. So again, uh, we could do a little sanity check and make sure that that's a positive number since the draw is greater than zero, right? So if it is, right, and my balance in the in sense is greater than or equal to the sense to withdraw. Uh, no, no, sorry. So if it's just if it's greater than, so. No, greater than or equal to, but that's fine. So if, if you have 100 pennies and you want to withdraw 100 pennies, that should be fine. Right. So we'll take our balance in cents minus the cents to withdraw. Great. And we can return true. They worked. Otherwise, we return a false. It didn't work for us. Okay. So this is all shared common behavior. This is going to work no matter what kind of account you are. Right. But then what we want to have is, well, what, what is going to be different then? Here. And when we make subclasses of bank account, right? if I have another class for a savings account or another class for some other kind of bank account, what do they need to implement? So I'm going to say, hey, a public abstract. So abstract is my keyword here again, and saying, hey, I'm just going to tell you what the method looks like, just like an interface. I'm not going to go define it. So we can have a public abstract, um, I don't know, maybe void? Um, how about a long here? So this will be um, earn interest. So, and I just put a semicolon here. So this is similar to interface method declaration here. I were just saying, hey, you will have this thing called earn interest if you're a subclass of bank account. You have to have it. That's the rule. Now, I don't know how people are going to implement it, and I can leave that up to subclasses, right? Some savings accounts can be different than checking accounts. They can be different than money market accounts. They can be different than investment accounts, that sort of thing. And have all sorts of fun options for bank account. 
but they all have, hey, we can get their balance, they have owner's names, that sort of thing. Now, the other thing with an abstract class, because it's not fully defined, I can't say I want a bank account, account equals new bank account, given Eric is the owner. It's not going to work. It's going to tell me bank account is abstract. It cannot be instantiated. You can't actually make an instance of bank account because it's not fully defined. Just like you can't make an interface. Or you can't make an instance of an interface. Right? So like in our lab 5, I can't make just a drivable. I can't say drivable you know, vehicle equals a new drivable. Right? Uh, drivable. Oh, I don't have the E there. Mine's drivable. You guys, let, let me do that whole lab and just call it drivable. Now, you get the same error. It doesn't even tell you it's an interface. It just says drivable is abstract and cannot be instantiated. Right? Same idea. It's just you can't do it there. You have too many extra lines here. There we go. So you can't make instances of them. Right, because it's not fully defined. So hopefully that, that makes sense, that it's not defined. So what we can do then is I can make a class that extends bank account. So let's make this as a savings account. And in savings account, we'll say we extends bank account. Right, now right off the bat, it's telling me savings account is not abstract, and does not override the abstract method earn interest in bank account. So you can have an abstract class that extends an abstract class if you want. Go for it. Sorry, it's got super itchy here. I don't know what's going on with my ear. Um, probably should just drink some more coffee, and that'll probably fix it. Okay? But if you want to not be abstract, right, you have to then go implement those interfaces. Or implement those methods. Same with the same with an interface, right? So the little helper hint says, let's just go implement it, and we get again. This is not a great um, starter code here, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's go down here and delete it. Okay, so now we have my earn interest. Now it needs to return some value here. Well, we don't know what to return here yet. So for now, I'm just going to put zero, um, you know, and leave myself a to do to fix this thing here. The next issue now, it says bank account in class bank account cannot be applied to given, or constructor bank account in class bank account cannot be applied, applied to given types. Required string found no arguments. Remember, by default, we get that no argument constructor, the default constructor. And a default constructor can't call a parent class constructor that takes arguments. If the parent class had a constructor that didn't take any arguments, sure, it would be perfectly fine. But this one doesn't. So we have to go and then call the bank account constructor. So we're, let's add a constructor for ourselves. Same as account. Given a string for owner name. Right, we can call my superclass given the owner name. Right off the bat. Call my superclass constructor given the owner's name. Great. Now other things about savings account. We probably have a private... Um, now, this is going to be double for interest rate, interest rate, right? And we'll, we'll set our interest rate to zero in the constructor. Now, we need ways to change interest rate because interest rate is going to change over time. So I'm going to add getters and setters for interest rate here. Horse, that's so awesome. Thank you for dropping by and letting me know. Congratulations. It's, it's really cool. Uh, that's that's fun. So are you um anything anything particular here? I just was reading about they wanted to like scale out their EV group and they're gonna hire like eight thousand people for that whole division. Not not all developers, but uh, a lot of focus on development. Um, a lot of stuff going on there at uh the automotive companies. So that's really cool. And you're working in Java, okay. That's fantastic. If you ever want to um, drop by the Discord horse um, and, and share any uh, tips on open jobs or anything, that'd be fantastic too. Um, hope, hoping to try and build it out a little bit more as we we get more alumni um, working their way through the programs. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for for letting me know. That's that is so cool. 
And I, I like when people stay local too. I, I don't know. I'm a little partial to Michigan myself, so it's uh, it's fantastic. All right, so let's, we'll have our interest rate. We can have a set and a get. Now we probably want to do some sort of sanity checking here in our set and interest rate, right? So hey, if the interest rate um, is more than I don't even know what do we want to do like one, like there's probably not a 100% interest rate. Right? Or if the interest rate is, we'll say, less than zero, we're not going to have a negative interest rate. Um, neither of those are good, actually. So we, let's, let's, do, let's take it if it's less than one and greater than zero. Right? Um, you know, maybe zero might be actually valid, but not less than zero. So if it is one of those, we'll set it. Otherwise, we're not going to change it. Now, this isn't great. We should give some sort of messages, but again, we haven't really got there yet, so I'm not going to sweat it too much. Uh, let me go back here to our syllabus, too. Yeah. Got to grab this. I'll grab that link here. I think next week is exceptions, right? This, uh, timing on this was rough. Let's see. Yeah, next week we'll talk about exceptions. So we'll, we'll look at the better way to do that. Um, next week when we talk about exceptions but for now it's probably okay all right so once i have an interest rate now i know how i can earn some interest here and this interest rate is rather um unspecific here right it, it you know is this the annual interest rate is it a monthly interest rate it, it doesn't really say so i'm actually going to go uh, refactor and rename this to uh, we'll call this the annual interest rate. And we want to also rename our getters and setters, which is really nice, so that it'll, it'll find all those for us. So we have the annual interest rate. So if we're earning interest, then you know, this we might even want to change to... Um, let's do, instead of earn interest, let, let's refactor that to... Um, whoa... Yeah, that's fine. Earn. Should this be monthly interest? Because generally we want um, that to be done monthly. Right? You, you don't want to wait to the end of the year to get interest. Uh, maybe it's like quarterly. I guess it depends on the account. Well, let's call this one monthly interest. So it's actually going to be a twelfth of the annual interest rate. Right. So to earn the interest, right, we need to calculate what that is. So we're going to have a long for cents earned, um, or interest, I don't know, interest earned is going to be my this dot balance in cents, right? And I, I have, act, I'm sorry, I can just say balance in cents because I have access to it. It's protected, so I can get it directly from my super class here, or I could use the method get balance in cents. Either one is perfectly fine, right? We've got direct access to it. We'll multiply that by our annual interest rate. And then we'll divide that by 12. Right, now annual interest rate is a double. So I should get, it's a long times a double divided by an integer. I'll still get a, a, um, a double result, but I want it as a long. It's saying, hey, there might be some lossy conversion from double to long. Right, so we probably then want to do math dot. Now, we could round. Now, rounding might actually give too many pennies to our customers, and we we are a cheap bank here. So I think math dot floor might be better here, where you say, hey, just give me the floor. So round down here of this amount divided by twelve, and then. All of that then, once we floored it, we really actually want it as a long. So we can do that explicit casting. Say, okay, take the floor, round it down, and then please turn it back into a long here. And then I can take my balance in cents, and I can add to it the interest earned, and I can return the interest earned. Excuse me, just so they know how much money they, they earned here with this savings account. Right? That would make sense what we're doing with this oh, goodness i got sorry getting a package delivered today I'm getting all sorts of notifications that's uh there we go my uh my cats are turning one 
um, on Valentine's Day. Uh, so we're getting them uh, one of those like cat condo, like the cat climbing tower things with like the little houses and the poles and, and all sorts of things. So I thought that'd be fun. But apparently it shipped faster than I thought it would too. It wasn't supposed to get here till Saturday, if you if you believe Amazon. So that was pretty cool. All right, so here's our savings account, right? It extends bank account. Right, we have our own way then to earn monthly interest. And we can change some of these things then right, with other sorts of accounts. Because right, this one, the, the interest rate can change over time. I think that one should be fine. Does it say there's errors? Error parsing file. I think it's probably fine. Let me try build real quick. So again, that means it's driving me nuts here. Let's see. It's thinking real hard about it. Okay, yeah, I think it's fine. It, it built. So I think that error will go away. Now we can do a different sort of bank account. So now let's make a, how about a certificate of depo deposit? Certificate of deposit. Now these are a little bit funnier. They're not exactly like bank accounts, but they're similar. All right, they'll have some similar features here. So then we'll extend bank account. Right? And then right off the bat it says, no, you don't, because you don't have your methods. So let's implement the abstract methods. And then let's add a constructor. Yep, add the constructor here, where we call super. Like, it does this stuff for us, which is fantastic. I love, love that. Okay, so when you make a certificate of deposit, this one has a fixed interest rate. So then we'll have here a double four um, interest rate. Uh, this will be the annual interest Right, and then we also need a a the um, generally they're of a fixed term. So we're going to say int um, number of months, or I don't know, term term in number of months. How about that term in months? So we'll say, hey, this is a thirty month certificate of deposit or a twelve month certificate of deposit. So with this, uh, you're you're guaranteeing the bank that you will leave the money in the account for that many that many months in exchange generally you get a better interest rate than just a savings account where you can put money in take money out right the idea generally banks are supposed to make their money loaning your money out to other people so if they know that money is going to be available it's a little safer for them to loan out that sort of thing right it's a little more guaranteed and they can do other things with it lots of fun stuff so we need then a place to store that annual interest rate now, this is not going to change, though, so we don't need any set methods for it here. We'll have an annual interest rate, interest rate, and then we can set it. This dot annual interest rate equals the annual interest rate. And again, we could do some, some sanity checking sort of things, but we probably don't, doesn't matter too much. And then, again, we'll have a int for term in months. Uh, oh, these should be private, sorry. So private is a default, but it, it's always nice to be explicit here. And we'll take the this term in months is the term in months. Okay, so then to earn the monthly interest, right, it'll be still this, the same arithmetic here, right, which will be nice. Um, should be fine. So maybe we could do some counting. That, that might be fun, right? So maybe we'll do some. Um, Let's count private int um, months of interest earned, maybe? Something like that. And we'll start them off at zero. And then we can say, hey, every time we earn monthly interest, let's check. We'll say, hey, if my month of interest earned is less than my term in months, then I can go and do this thing. Right, why not? So then, you know, I'm just going to copy some of this logic out here. do that. Uh, we'll take the balance plus that, and then we're going to take our month of interest earned plus plus, right? Increase that by one. We'll return that. Otherwise, we're just going to return zero. So if you've already earned the monthly interest that many times for the term, we're going to stop earning interest. Essentially, the account should have been closed, but you know, there's some other logic and stuff that has to happen behind the scenes for that. So we'll call this one good. So again, we have all the shared behavior in bank account, right? For depositing, withdrawing, 
getting your balance and cents, that sort of thing. Um, it's all there. With a specialized behavior that can show up here. Right? And if we want to, right, because you can't really add your certificate to the deposit, we can go and override that deposit method. Public Boolean deposit. Given a uh, long sense to deposit. 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 And we can just return false. We just say, nope, doesn't work. And we can change that superclass behavior to say, nope, you're not allowed to do that. Right? Same with withdraw. Um, this was a withdraw here. Now let's check here and see if my months of interest earned is equal to the term in months. Return true. Um, and we also needed the, I'm sorry, the uh, sense to withdraw. That's right, sense to withdraw. Here. So if we've matched it here, right, we're actually just going to withdraw everything. If we haven't, no, no you're not allowed, it's not going to work here. Right, so then we'll take our uh, balance and cents. Set it equal to zero. You're done, right? Once you reached your term, you withdraw everything. Right, you close out the whole, whole certificate. So we can change some of that behavior, too. Right, but it'll look like a bank account. So over in here, right, we can make that list or that collection of bank accounts. Maybe I'll have an array list of type bank account. All my accounts. Equal the new array list of type bank account. Bank account. And yeah, let's add, add array list, that sort of thing. And then here we can go and add, so accounts.add. We can add a new uh, savings account for Eric. Right? Or we could take an accounts.add. We could add a new certificate deposit. Certificate of deposit for Eric at, uh, what's the annual interest rate? We'll say like uh, point, point 0.5 or point zero 0.05, uh, 5%. Right, for maybe a, a 12 month term? Sure, why not? Right, they both, because they both extend bank account, they both are types of bank account. We can add them here. Okay, that feeling okay so far? And sorry, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on that one before, my apologies. Right, so let me uh, let me commit that one to GitHub here, and then we want to look um, a little bit more at how we can tell if classes implement interfaces. Let's, uh, let's grab twenty one fifty one here. Let's abstract classes. I don't think I changed Lab Five, did I? Oh, it's a new line here. I'm going to discard that change. I'll get rid of that new line. That's fine. That was a nothing change. Okay, and then we'll commit and push. All right, so let's go look at... Um, not do that in our lab here. Let's do a new project, I guess. Let's call this one, I don't know, checking for interfaces. Checking for interfaces. Ah, that's the wrong one. So let's, in our project here, then let's add another interface. So let's do a new, let's do, let's call this one um, 
log. Log? How about logger? Maybe logger. Logger might be fun. So then what the logger interface is going to do, it's going to say, hey, we have a uh, every, you know, public by default here. So we'll have a void log message given a string for the message. So there's something you can log here, right? If it's a, a logging interface. I don't know what how you're going to do it. Maybe you'll log to a file. Maybe you'll log to the you know, event log somewhere. Maybe you'll log over a web request call somewhere. I don't know exactly how you're going to do it, but you'll, you'll have a way that you can log messages here. And then let's have another interface. Um, so you can log messages, and then we'll have another one for oh, what, countable. I don't know. Just come up with something silly. And we'll say this is, um, uh, how about an int um, increase count? Increase count and an int for decrease count. Okay. And then we'll add a class then. So let's have um, this is going to be, um, no, we'll just call it an event. Uh, event might be bad, but that's okay. So then event, then we're going to say, hey, implements logger. So this event will implement logger here. So we need to have that method for log. We'll go ahead and implement that method. And for this one to log, we'll just output that log message to the console. Right? We're not going to do anything super fancy here. Um, but then we can have some other methods here. So we can have a you know, private string for name. Sure. And then we'll add some methods here. We'll add our getters and setters for name. We'll let that one change. And we'll add a constructor. Given a name here. And then how about we even say, how about we, we take name plus the message here. So whatever the name of this event is, plus we'll log that message. Sure, why not? So we can have an event here, and let's add a new class. Um, this will be my item. I don't know, how about item storage? Why not? So then item storage, then we'll implement countable. Implements countable. So it's going to need a private int for number of items. And then we'll add our constructor for it. Um, probably don't even need, let's just start it at zero. Right, so we'll say our number of items equals zero. Okay, and then we'll add this countable methods here. So to increase the count, we'll take our number of items plus plus, and we'll return the number of items. Number of items, oops, uh, semicolons, there we go. And to decrease the count, right, we'll take our number of items, minus, minus, and then we'll return the number of items. More semicolons, my goodness, I don't know why I'm forgetting those here. And probably we only want to do this if my number of items is greater than zero. We want to decrease the number of items, right? So why not? So now we can be countable. You have some items. Okay, that's just our, our general item storage. So when I'm working with a bunch of values, if I want to see if they implement an interface, we got some options now. Right, so I can make a event. I don't know, this is, um, we'll say a party equals a new event of a party. And we can call party dot log message starts at 9 p.m. Sure, right, and it will log them out. Oh, that should be lowercase, sorry. Let me refactor rename that. That's bad. That should be lowercase l log message. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Sorry about that. Did we do that for, yeah, countable was fine, so just messed that one up. So sure, we, we just have an event. We can do log message on it because we know it implements that method. It implements that interface. Right, and then we could make a item storage. Uh, this is, I don't know, our um, bottles of pop. 
equal new item storage. And then we'll take bottle to pop and we'll increase the count. Increase count. We'll go get some of these out here. And we can, you know, add a bunch of add a bunch of bottles, whatever we want to do here. Right. And at our party, then we can have people, they can add items or they can take items out. Um, maybe it's more of a potluck style, right? If people are bringing their own pop, that sort of thing. We got some, we got, you know, we can, we can play around with that and see. Okay. So now if I want to see, hey, if something implements a particular interface, right? And these ones we don't have lots of. Maybe we could add some more. Um, what we looked at before is you can take your class and you can do this get class to get the class out. And then from there, you can get all of the interfaces, right? You can get interfaces out, which is really cool. Right? And then we can loop through those interfaces and see if we implement the particular name of the interface. That's one option. Um, let, me, let me just go, actually, I'm just going to go steal that from where we did it before. So I don't remember the exact, you have to like save it as a type of class or something. Um, let me go grab that real quick. Interfaces, was it get interfaces or something? Yeah, right here. This array of classes. And then you can check to see hey, if it is something here. I have this idea. That's one that's one approach. You want me to copy that one in again? So that was gonna be our how about our models of pop? We'll get the interfaces out, and then we want to see, hey, if it is then a countable dot class, you can count this. Right, that, that was one way. Now, this is a little bit funky, a little bit odd here, um, but you can do it. So the other way, then, Java cast class as interface type is the other approach. Um, what do we want? Is it this one? New instance? No, that's not. Oh, goodness. Yes. I don't know. Some, uh, was it in here? I think this is what people did. Yeah, here we go. Use this instance of operator, which is kind of fun. Um, don't think we need. Well, I don't want any of that. Where is it here? I think it was just this one here, just a quick little cast here. So we're going to have some sort of object and use this instance of, and then we can treat it as a given type. So again, we're not really using this. We haven't really turned it into, and we haven't been able to use any of those methods here. So this is just checking for it. So a nice way then, right, if we wanted to be able to use those interface methods, if we don't know which ones they implement, Right, like with the project, we said, hey, we want this, the space class, and then we're going to have subclasses of space that implement the interfaces. Let's go back to that. Right? So we need this approach um, is going to make it work a little nicer for you. Right, so we had space then with this string description, and then we're going to have these interfaces, and then the spaces will go implement those interfaces as subclasses. We have different types of spaces. So if you wanted to treat it as a given type, then you could say, hey, I want to take my item storage. Um, 
what was that code here again? Gotta do it, make sure we're doing the right order. If it's an instance of. So if my bottles of pop instance of um, countable. So if it is this, if it's able to become countable here, then I can treat it as that type. So then we'll have a, uh, we'll call this a countable, countable bottles of pop as countable bottles of pop. We'll do this casting thing here. So we'll say, okay, actually do this explicit casting, then I can go use those methods on it. Then I can take my countable bottles of pop and I can call the increase or decrease count. Now, this was kind of silly because we know what it was. Um, it wasn't a, a base class inheriting. So maybe, maybe we should go back and, and do a better example here. I'm sorry. Now, I think, did we have the Project 2 stub here? Let me look and see if we have that one. Come on, open. Up one, we want 2151. Winter project. One. Okay, we did have some starter code here. Good, 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 good. That's what I was looking for. So let me, I'll just save that. This one was not great uh, for checking for interfaces. I'm sorry. It'll be easier to just look at it in project one. All right, so this diggable space then. Right, we said, hey, we're going to implement the diggable interface. There we go. So if we have a bunch of spaces, right? And again, there was that island idea. Island had an array list, array list of spaces. Right, but again, you know, let's just have a space. Um, you know, some face equals a diggable space. And if I don't know if it's a diggable space or not, right? Because all I know that it's a space here. Um, oh, sorry, equals a new diggable space. When I say some space, the only methods I get are things that come from the space class. There's nothing there. There is no dig method. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely use this as a, the starter if you'd like. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to it, so um, I'm just kind of showing some of that layout. So there is no dig option, even though it's a diggable space. So because we're only treating it as a space, the only things you can do are things that belong to space. So then we need to go do that casting bit here. So we can say, hey, if my some space is an instance of diggable space, right? then I can say, hey, I want a diggable space. Uh, sure, diggable space. We'll do the casting here of that some space. Then I can call diggable space. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Diggable, diggable space. There we go. Diggable space dot dig. Now the dig method is available because we've cast it and treated treated it as. We've cast it as the type. We can do that method on it. Right. And if we have a space, let's do, let's just make a, an array list of faces here real quick. Array list of type space, spaces equals new array list. Again, this is the sort of thing your island should do, but this is okay. Um, not a big deal here. We'll say spaces dot, uh, we want to add, add or import. Add a new space, just a, a generic space. And then spaces dot add a diggable space. Right, we'll have some diggable spaces. We'll have some other types of spaces. All those sorts of good things here. And then we can say for space space in the spaces collection. If the space then is an instance of diggable space, we can go do this thing again. This is just checking here real quick. So there's no space dot dig. It just doesn't exist, right? Space dot 
all we get are anything that's shared there. Right, so we can't call it yet. But we should be able to go and dig then. And if it's not, we'll say, uh, just for fun, you can't dig this. You can't dig it. And then if we do dig, sure, I mean, something will happen here. Um, we'll say we do dig it. You dig it. Okay, so it, we should expect it, oh, this should be of space here. We should expect it to work for not space, but yes, for diggable space. Right, so when we run that, we should be able to dig one and not dig the other. Right, you can't dig it, and then you can dig it. So we can look and see, right, depending on which class it actually is, what we're implementing, right, we can find our methods. Then you can do it with interface types as well. Um, the interface, though, is only going to have the diggable portion, where space itself probably has other things that you might want, like you can get out the descriptions and things like that. This idea with space, right, was going to have descriptions. Let's see. I'm going to cite my source here, because why not? Why not? Definitely should do that. Cool. All right, so space was going to have that string description. It might have a tool available there, so there's some other things happening with space. Um, even if it's not a particular type of space that you can do something with. Does that make sense? Okay, so those abstract classes, that was checking for interfaces, and then there was one more I'm not remembering now. Let me pop open Discord real quick. Oh, it's 11 here. So why don't we take a break? Uh, I'll throw some more music on. We'll come back in 10 minutes, pick up that last extra topic, and I'll talk a little bit more about some unit tests so we can go from there, okay? Go grab yourself some coffee. at 11, 10 a.m. Oh, all the plugins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Maybe, maybe... I mean, I just installed it out of box. It shouldn't have a lot of plugins, Mike, but maybe it does. We'll take a look and see.
Howdy folks, welcome on back. All right, yeah, Mike, so maybe, I, I mean, I haven't added anything to that means, so I feel like it's just slow out of the box. So maybe I need to go and trim out some, some of the stuff, but, you know, that's okay. I mean, it's not, it works, and I just like to complain that it's slow, but it's probably okay. I guess we'll do some, uh, so this is interface checking for or, or subclasses or interfaces that sort of thing okay. all sorts of fun ways you can check for those we'll put and push those ones ah, and the last um, question here was about static methods or, or static, any, anything relating to static. So the idea with static is that it's defined once at the class level and not at the instance level. So right now with this bank savings account, the interest rate belongs to the instance of savings account. So each savings account can have a different annual interest rate. Right? If we wanted to, and it, it's an option, right? If, if all savings accounts at the bank have the exact same interest rate, then we can do this differently. They don't need to belong to the instance. They could be static. They could belong to the class. So we could then say this is a private static double annual interest rate. And then these methods here then are static. Um, and then it's not this dot here either. So there's no instance. And then we want, um, it would be is it a savings account dot annual interest rate equals. So we would no longer have a this because it doesn't belong to this instance. It belongs to the class. And so now all bank accounts will have the annual interest rates. So we probably don't want to set that separately here. So we want to start it off at zero here, not in the constructor. Because constructor's job is to give all the attributes values. For static, there is no static constructor. It just if you just set the values when the class is defined. So static values don't get set. I mean they they could get set in the constructor, uh, but the problem with that is if you go set the value, right, and then you go make a new one and you're resetting it every time you make a new one, everyone else is losing their value. So that that's no good. So generally you'll just set them here. Right? So now this is shared among all instances now. Among 
all instances of saving the account. So each instance doesn't have its own, so I can have 10 different accounts. All they're going to have is the owner name and their balance. Right? The annual interest rate is defined just once now at the class level. We can still use it, right? getting our annual interest rate out. Okay, so that's, that's for static here then. So that's for static. Static attributes and methods. All right. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? How are you folks feeling about this project? We got to do in a week. Right? We're kind of breaking it down step by step by step. So that player class has their name, has an island. So an instance of island is their, their attribute. The list of tools that they picked up. And I'll do tools for building, digging, and chopping. That sort of thing. Um, the island class is this 2D list array of spaces. Array or array list. Um, probably just want to generate them randomly is going to be the easiest thing for you. If you want to hard code it, you can too. Um, but you could like pick a random number, 1 through 10, and you know, on a 1, make it a space. On a 2, make it a space with this tool. On a 3, make it a space with this tool. On a 4, make it a space with this tool. On a 5, make it a diggable space. On a 6, make it a choppable space. On a 7, make it a buildable space. You know, that sort of, you could make them random if you want. Um, probably easier than putting them all in by hand, but maybe not. Maybe that feels like a lot of work too. I'm not sure. That space class has the string for description and then the random chance of a tool being found there. Right, so if you add that to the space class constructor, then that it may or may not have a tool, right? It might make life easier for you. Then, then your building an island is super easy, right? Like just five of them are just random faces and then maybe some diggable and choppable and buildable spaces. The space subclass is the implement of the interface and add that new functionality. Like you can dig, you can build, and you can chop, which should change the description here. So when you when you run those methods, it should change the description here. I don't know that number. Um, so that was the idea with the functionality. Like it, so a diggable space then should like the description should be hey you know here's a nice space with some sand you can dig in or something something silly like that. Um, we define the methods to interact with the space using those interfaces, right? Like build and dig and chop, right? Those sort of thing. Um, change this, change the description. So that, that should be, yeah, that was just a repeat there, essentially. And then you can navigate around the island and interact with it. So as you move around the different spaces, you can look at the descriptions and then you can see, hey, do you have the right tool? And it does that space implement the right interface. And then you can use that tool on the space if you want. Kind of walking around and navigating. Is that making sense? So just some practice playing with interfaces, um, checking the types, you know, imp implementing them, checking your classes, um, moving around, having a little bit of fun with it. So it's a, there's a lot to these sort of like open world style games where you can just build anything you want on them and, and all sorts of fun stuff there. Um, but it's a, just a, a basic little starter here. Okay, and I think actually we covered, I don't know, do we need to talk any more about unit tests? Are we feeling okay about unit tests? I think we did a pretty good job of those um, on Tuesday. Pull those ones down. So I think that's actually all I've got. So I don't want to assign a lab because we got project one coming up due in a week. So we do have the unit test lab due on Tuesday. We'll work on lab six due Tuesday. Uh, work on project one due... Um, Trisaurus, no, because this, I mean, it's not even really a game. We're just, like, taking this tiny bit of functionality and trying to put it together. Um, an actual game is going to be a whole lot more complex and have a whole lot of other stuff, um, it, going on with it. So we're just, we're just trying to say, you know, hey, we're going to set the, set the base up for, here's some classes that we can interact with, here's some ways we can walk around. Um, there's not a whole lot of gaming that's actually happening here yet, so... I don't think you're going to find any any sort of examples like that that you might want. Okay. Cool. So we got the lab to work on, we got the project to work on, and we'll come back next week and we're going to talk about exceptions and the right way to handle some of these things. Um, exceptions are fantastic. Um, 
really it lets your class like communicate that a bad thing has happened instead of just returning a boolean value or you know even for, you know printing, printing out a message which is ugly so we'll talk about that uh, we can do some prep for the midterm the midterm week coming up again you'll have all week for it um so sometimes this class is a four credit class that just meets once a night or once a week like at night um, we, we're having to be split but i don't want to just jam it into one two hour period um, and then we'll have midwinter break so we'll actually be done with everything and actually be able to get a break in hopefully and then we'll come back and flip over to our java fx and more advanced topics that's not like a plan and we're getting closer and closer looking out into april awesome all right if you folks have any questions let me know uh should be messages we can email text find me on discord uh that sort of thing and we can go from there okay all right take care everybody have a great weekend